Okay, so this is my empty history. I'm going to call it Galaxy 101. And at this point, I'm going to upload data. I'm going to pass paste fetch data. And I'm going to paste these two URLs from the tutorial in here and click start. This will create new uh, two new data sets in the history. Okay, you can expand data sets to look uh, to figure out what's inside. We had a peek what's inside. I'm going to rename them so they have more descriptive names. I'm going to call this one exons. And this one I will call snips. Okay, so the first thing to do is to intersect exons with snips to figure out which exons actually contain snips. In order to do this, I will go to bed and uh, find the tool uh, which is called uh, bed tools intersect intervals. This tool intersects one data set with another, so data set A with data set B. In our case, data set A is exons and data set B is snips. So let's select exons here. You can either select um, your data sets from history using this dropdown, or you can drag them directly like this. So we're intersecting exons with snips. We don't care whether they're on the same strand or not. And the way we're going to intersect them is we're going to select this option. So what this means is that for every exon, we're going to list all SNPs that overlap, that lay within that exon. So our file A exons, file B is SNPs, and here we choose write the original query in B for each overlap. And uh, let's leave all the other options as they are and click Execute. So you can see that this would create a new data set. So every tool you're going to run is going to create additional data sets in history. And let's look at this data set. So we can click on that eye icon. And what you see here is that you have the exon information and next to it is the SNP information. And here it's kind of very easy to see how many SNPs per exon we have. So for example, this is the same exon because it has the same IDs and it has two different SNPs. So really, we can uh, count how many SNPs we have per exon just by counting uh, lines with unique exon IDs. So uh, let's look at this file a little bit more. So here you have chromosome, this is start position, this is end position, this is ID of the exon. This is some score field we're not using here, this is strand. And for SNP, we have a similar file, just without the strand information. We have chromosome, start, end, and ID of that particular SNP. So to do this <clears throat> in a more uh, scientifically accurate way, let's group this data set by exon ID. And within each group, for example, this is going this, uh, for, for example, these two exons will form one group because, well, actually it's going to be a group of uh, five. You can see here it's, oh, no, sorry. It's going to be a group of four because they have the same ID. So this exon has four SNPs because here you have these uh, SNPs with different uh, IDs. So a proper way of doing this is to group this by exon ID and count how many unique SNP IDs we have within that group. Well, uh, we have a very good tool for that purpose. It's called Data Mesh. It meshes data. So let's use this. The data set we want to run this operation is this, the output of our intersect. Uh, we want to group by field four, because remember, this is where our exon ID is. Now, the operation that we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, we're going to count unique values and we're going to count unique values in this column 10 because column 10 contains SNP IDs. And let's run it, see what happens. And this is the data set that we got. So in this data set, we have exon ID, and this is the count of unique SNPs within this exon. Um, let's find which 
exons, let's see, what's the top five exons with the highest number of SNPs? And for this, we're essentially going to sort this data set. It's going to go here, click sort, select this data set, the output of data mesh, and we are going to sort on column two because it contains counts. It's a numerical sort in descending order, meaning that the maximum value will be on top. And so now this data set is sorted. We can take a look. And uh, the winner here is the exon with 27 uh, SNPs in it. Let's restrict this data set to just top five exons. And for this, I'm going to go to text manipulation and select, select first two, which selects first lines from data set. And I'll tell the tool to select first five lines from this data set and run it. Now, let's um, look at this. We have these five winners, five exons with the highest number of uh, SNPs in them, and wouldn't it be nice to visualize this data in the genome browser? Uh, the only problem with that is that while doing all these operations, we actually lost all the start and end coordinates, because remember, they were there in the original files, start and end. So we need to somehow to get them back. And let's do this. So I will go to this section, find the tool called um, compare two data sets. And I will be comparing exons here against this last data set. It's already selected. Let me scroll here. So in the first data set in exons, we're interested in column four because it contains the name. But in the last data set, it's column one that contains the name. So we are essentially intersecting exons. We're comparing exons using column four with this uh, select five data sets on column one. And we obviously want to keep rows that match. And you will see that now we have all the information about these exons, we have their coordinates. So now we can visualize them in Genome Browser. To do this, we expand the data set and normally you would see display at UCSC um, link here. But in this case, Galaxy doesn't know which genome to display it at, which, which version of the genome we want to render these data. So we need to tell it this, that this data actually is derived from human human HG34, you can see there are a lot of patches, but what we need is actually HG38 proper, just like that. And if I click save, you will see that now the database is set to HG38, and now you can see you have this display and you see a C main button. And uh, we can click it. Usually, Genome Browser goes to some random location, but in order to visualize actually our uh, egg zone of interest, let's just select its coordinates from here. And enter them there in this particular format, which you CSC likes. And this is the sex zone, and you can see that in fact you have lots of SNPs. The green ones are synonymous, they don't change underlying codon, and the red ones are non-synonymous, they do change the underlying codon. So there's an amino acid change caused by this SNP. Let's go back to Galaxy. Let's collapse all data sets. So we have a neat view of the history. So this history is essentially, this is, this is outline of our analysis. And let's suppose you want to perform the same analysis on a different set of data. So instead of redoing this step by step, we can go ahead and extract a workflow from this history. And this interface will ask you which steps, which steps from the history we want to include. In this case, we want to include all. Let's call this date, let's call, let's call this workflow, find exons with the highest number of features and click Create Workflow. So now you can edit or, uh, or run the workflow, but you can also access it from this Workflow tab. So I'll click on that tab. You see this is the workflow we just created. And if we click on this dropdown, let's choose the Edit option so we can see how this workflow looks like. So we have all these nodes. So these are individual tools. And 
this is the output of the workflow, the data set with top five axons, and, the, uh, and these are the inputs. So one input is called axons, the other is called SNPs, but maybe we don't want to overlap with SNPs again. Let's make it a little bit more generic. So I'm going to call this features. Maybe we want to, again, do this analysis on some other types of genomic features. You can see it's changed now here. And for the last data set, uh, I, want to ch I want to tell Galaxy to rename it so I can clearly see in my history what's going on. I'm going to rename it to top five exons, for example. And at this point, I want to save. You should not forget to save. One other thing that I can do here is if I uncheck these checkboxes, I will not see these intermediate data sets in my history. They will be hit. And that would make uh, history easier to, to look at. So let's run this workflow. Let's go back to Galaxy and let's, well, let's save it. Let's go back to Galaxy. And let's create a new history. So this is a new empty history. Now I can go to this multi-history view and copy the exons data sets. Let's reuse this data set. I'm just going to drag it like here. Go back to the analysis view. I will name this history because we are going to use repeats as the other set of genomic features. And let's upload the repeat information now. I'm going to click upload and paste the URL of the repeats data set that you also have in your tutorial. And I'm going to give it more descriptive name. So now I can simply run my workflow on these two data sets. Go to workflow, click the run button, use exons as the exons data set and repeats as this feature states. Now you can see it's, it says as bad because when we uploaded this Galaxy actually uh, identified as an interval, but Galaxy knows how to convert interval to bad, so it's not going to be a problem. And now all I need to do is click run you will see this workflow invocation display and eventually you will see the final data set. So the coordinates of five exons containing highest number of repeats. And here you have five exons with the highest number of repeats.